It is the riot on Radio U. This is the Perd Cursed the the podcast. Po- podcast. <laughs> Good. Hello, it's happening. guys. Thank you so much for joining us for this podcast edition today. We hope things are going well. So, things that you're going to hear in today's show, you're going to hear about special Justice League food. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> you uh, can have a subscription box for it, but we'll give you all the details in case you're interested in a new subscription service. <laughs> Okay, Um, we talk about flying cars, skipping work, Silence of the Lambs, uh, and a a very special movie trailer. It's special. (laughs) It is. Going back to the Silence of the Lambs, though, I think if you're saying to yourself, I really would like a vacation or just an overnight trip, maybe this will be an opportunity for you to find a place to go if travel's not really opened up still yet in your area. Maybe this will (laughs) work. So you drive there? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, it, it'll be wonderful. Just wait till you hear the details. <laughs> oh, I, a lot of people getting really excited already. So, all right. Well, here's what I got for you. Is, uh, anything? You know what? No, I've already told you everything. There's other things. I just don't remember what they are. So for the movie trailer that Obi was mentioning, <laughs> make sure you head over to Radio U Riot. Are you okay there? He's fine. I'm fine. Sure Don't worry. Head over to Radio U Riot, our Facebook page. You can watch the trailer that we talk about. It features Godzilla, King Kong, and a very special edition. So it's at Radio U Riot on Facebook. Wayne. It features Wayne. <laughs> People are going to You find Batman. out who Wayne. <laughs> You find out who Wayne is soon enough. So, <laughs> well, for well, hey, you guys enjoy the podcast. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. We're always glad to have you. And uh, if you want to hear more, uh, just keep listening because we're coming up. It's the riot. The riot isn't all bad, but this is the worst of the riot. Radio U. So, Nikki, do I sound more rugged and or manly this morning? At I, all? I think you do. I think it comes through on your voice. Are we are we you trying can, something different? It? Yeah, I, I feel it. Everybody feels it. We don't just hear it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can't. You guys won't be able to see it, but my hands are all cut up. And despite my trying, I've still got bits of oil underneath my fingernails. <laughs> you look like a real worker right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody that did, like, real work yesterday. I, I took apart and cleaned a carburetor mm-hmm. yesterday. Doesn't that just sound manly? It does. You don't You don't think so? No, I you're think not, it does. You're not feeling it? I, I do. I know you've been work. Is it a is it a snow thrower or a snow thing? Have you been working on that? Yep. Yep, yep. I and have. you needed and, to do uh, the carburetor for it? Yeah, I, I ended up taking it apart twice. Mm-hmm. I got I got it really it's so clean. You just <laughs> wouldn't believe how clean it is. Was that the problem wow. with it? Did you get it to work? No. No, okay, not at no. all. Like yeah. <laughs> no, it might not be fixable at this point. You put a lot of time into it. Well, I'll tell you what I did. I ordered a new carburetor, and uh, the th- this thing is only two years old. My dad gave it to me. He moved south, and I was like, Dad, he's you're not going that far south. Like, you could still end up with snow. And he's like, ah, blah, blah, blah. So he gave it to me, and uh, it, it ever never work? worked. Okay, so no. it never worked I even mean, from him? Has, no, it, hit, it did from him. He bought it brand new. It's probably been used like three times. And when he gave it to me, he did all the proper maintenance, which included draining the oil and draining the gasoline and all this crap. And so, uh, theoretically, I should have put oil and gas in it, and it would have started right up. Yeah. That never happened. So, I went to the parts store and got carburetor cleaner, and the guy's like, trying to get your snowblower to start. <laughs> I was like, you can tell. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I, I am. am. Can I bring it in? Good Can luck you look with at that. it? <laughs> well, do you think so a, a new carburetor will actually work, or is it just can't you just take it back? It's only been two years. <laughs> Can you try that? No, I. I don't even know where he got it. I think he got it at maybe. Okay, this is a whole other thing, but I think he bought it at Sears. Yeah, because where he where he used to live, there was still a Sears. I don't know. I can tell you this: there are no Sears left anywhere <laughs> anymore, and. <laughs> I finally, like, calling around trying to buy a carburetor, it was like, everybody's just like, order it on Amazon. Amazon's like, out of stock. You can have it next week. Aww. So my game my game plan right now, um, 
is to probably get this thing all cleaned up and ready to go for spring. Like Good. That's, right on time, right? <laughs> yep. Yep. If worse Kinda goes to so worse, maybe, you know, Costco has a generous return policy. You didn't buy it there, but maybe they'll just take it back maybe anyway. Just take it. They don't even maybe carry it, but they're like, well, we feel sorry for you, sir. And we can't help but see that you tried to fix it. And we're going to take it back for you. <laughs> do you promise to come back someday? We do. We'll be sure back we every day. <laughs> Oh my gosh, dude! Aww, I'm like it's been rough. I it's just dumb. Like I don't. And you're out there. Like I've got this sinus infection. I'm out there. I'm huffing gasoline fumes in the corner. You know, whatever. <laughs> working on this thing. I don't like. I don't even know what happened. I just know that I've cleaned a carburetor now, and I would feel a lot better telling you that <laughs> if. <laughs> I told you that after I cleaned it, it worked. Well, what you should say is you, you've you really done a lot yesterday. You cleaned out a carburetor twice, and now you've ordered a brand new one. So you're all set. Yeah. You've covered everything. I feel like I can hang out in a garage somewhere and talk. And you sound, can hold you know, your own. Like, Aw. Yeah, like, Sorry again. So it's not hi- working. I want to say hi to Sam. Sam says, I assume the beard helped with the carburetor install by increasing your manliness. Of course. Of course. Of course, now it's just a shadow. Which makes you wonder, if I hadn't trimmed it, would it have worked? Your snow thing would have worked. You lost your power. I did. Daggone it. What you're about to hear will live on the internet forever. Sorry, internet. The worst of the riot podcast. I'll have to say, I don't totally understand the numbers uh, coming back the way that they have. And I'm referring, Nikki, to the COVID 19 numbers which numbers have you seen that yesterday was the lowest number of covid cases since october 18th in the united states wow i did see they kept bringing up they were mentioning how like places where they had a really big push on staying inside closing things down so like say california its numbers dipped down but then the same was like florida where they did not do all that stuff, and it numbers also dip down as well. That's the part that I don't understand because I don't. I feel like there are a lot of places where, man, <laughs> at least in my day to day life, I don't see anybody taking really active steps to prevent anything. They got a mask kind of hanging off their face. They're not maintaining any social distancing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but the numbers are going down. Uh, and it, like I said, it's the lowest since October. And it, yesterday was the fewest deaths as a daily death count since November 20th. So here we are in the middle of February and I mean, maybe it's the weather. People are just staying inside, mm-hmm. uh, but the numbers are going down, and that's a good thing. Would they? Would it have anything to do with vaccines at this point, or it's just not enough, as fast enough to change that number, or just yeah, I like you that, said, everybody's staying in. That's a great question. The other thing that I mean, I get it, but with the vaccines, they're like get a vaccine and still stay home and still wear a mask. It's like what? What? What do you? <laughs> That's exactly the noise he makes. <laughs> or maybe you're just dealing with less people uh, getting it. Um, so it just, by way of that, just goes down more. I don't know. They, it seems to me as I read through it, they can't come up with like, A maybe reason? it's this and maybe it's that. But it, it just seems like we don't really know and a lot of it is like, well, it could be a possibility of all of these things coming together Probably. to fight the whatever. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, they also say, and this is interesting, there are some advisors that are calling for uh, the return of in-person schooling. And they say that the best way to get that to come back is if we would prioritize the vaccination of teachers. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. I don't know. I know some teachers that are like, I don't want your <laughs> implant in my brain. Well, like, you know, maybe if we just say uh, you're eligible and then eligible. it's all on it's you good. if you decide you want it or decide you don't want it. That's none of our business. <laughs> well, let me just say this. Congratulations to the United States. USA. <laughs> USA. It's I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> I don't know what we're doing. Keep doing it. Yeah. It's working. Well, we, everybody has a tendency to fight with each other concerning, like, what's in the whys. Don't focus on that. Just know that it is going down, and that is a good thing.
That's good news. The definition of insanity is putting the riot on again and again and expecting a better result. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. I feel like I don't want to use this person's name because they're obviously trying to get attention. I don't want to give them the attention. (laughs) And yet what they have done is worth at least discussing. So, but we're not going to mention the name though, right? (laughs) Maybe we won't. Okay. So a, uh, a TikTok user. Uh, she has currently 459,000 followers on TikTok. Yeah. So, I mean, it's nothing to sneeze at. Uh, she has gone ahead and used Gorilla Glue on her hair. Oh, to mimic the other lady? Yep. Well, that was a trend over the weekend. To see, like... Was it? Did I miss it? It was a trend to do, um, to see if you could put the Gorilla Glue, like, on your hair and get it out in time to kind of, like, see if the lady was telling the truth or, oh I don't know, to just to be a part of a trend. So, yeah, that was something that people were doing over the weekend. I don't know why, okay. but they were. We got to get a hold of this FOMO, guys. All right? <laughs> like, it's got, it has got to stop. I don't think like, it's the it's fear so- of missing out, but everybody wants to mimic and duplicate the success that people with viral videos and viral TikToks have. So they just want to jump on the train at the same time in hopes of getting followers. So, Nikki, where were you on this? You're a TikTok user. You're a social <laughs> a, media influencer. Uh-uh, I'm a TikTok watcher, and I'm not gluing anything to my hair. I don't want to deal with that. That's causing well, a big you, problem. How do you expect to get ahead? That's what uh, I want to know. I'll have to find another way. <laughs> I just would rather <laughs> not put the glue in my hair. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm just saying that if you want to find the success that you're looking for, you gotta be willing. I don't. You, you got to be willing to get out there, Nikki. You just do. So did she get the hair? Did she get the glue out of her hair, or what happened? Um, no. She went to the emergency room, and uh, it looks like uh, the adhesive ended up like I don't know. I, oh, she started. Oh my gosh! Not a what GoFundMe. Do not started, tell me a GoFundMe. Yeah. No, no, no. Yes, that doesn't work. To go to to go to L.A. to get the stuff. No, removed. no, 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 no. We can't do that. That that doesn't oh, get to work. Worst. People were mad That's at a, the original lady doing a GoFundMe. That doesn't work. I, you know what, like Tessica Brown, who's the lady with the GoFundMe, that's one where it was really stupid, but at least she was stupid the first time. You know what I mean? Like, first stupid. Second stupid is, you. what are you doing? Like, that's Following on you. stupid is dumb. The other guy, there's this guy who works in adhesives. I don't know what his job was, but he made a TikTok showing all you do is you go and get this, like, cocoa butter sort of liquid stuff like that palmer stuff and you just put it on and it just comes right out now for the original lady she had had it in her hair for a long time so some people said well she waited so long it had bonded even more but if you just put glue on right away you just go get that stuff and it comes right off yeah look you know what no need for a gofundme (laughs) all figured out (laughs) and it's pretty cheap to buy the stuff but are we sure it works yeah oh yeah i think your hair well I think we should test it on your hair. No, I don't want to. I love my hair. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to do anything to my hair. I don't want to have okay. that problem. So no, we're going to we pass could, on that. We, we can have. Uh, I'll just. I'll bring my razor that I've been shaving with, and if it doesn't work out, we'll just take care of it. We'll just cut it right away. Maybe just a small section, you know, to test the glue. Just to, test always, it. We're just going to test say it. You're supposed to just test it on a little piece. It'll be a very little That's, piece. <laughs> So it'd be like painting your wall. You just paint a little strip. We'll see see what what we think after it dries. This is the worst of the riot podcast. Okay, Nikki, let's talk about your Apple iPhone 13 that you're going to get later this year. So what's the rumors on it? Well, here's the rumors. So the iPhone 13, they say, is going to have a 120 hertz refresh rate on the screen. Okay. And I I know what you're thinking. You're like... Who cares? But why I'm Why you, would we want that? <laughs> I'll tell you, when you see it at work on a phone screen, yeah. it'll blow your mind. Uh, just because it's so amazing. <laughs> it's it's just one of those things that you right now you think your phone is smooth and it works so well. When you see it running at 120 hertz, you'll be like, what? What? I've got a friend of mine who has, he's got an Android phone that refreshes at, I think it's 90 hertz. Mm-hmm. 
I think. And it's still one of those things when you look at it, you're like, man, that is really awesome. So uh, Apple's going to go all the way to 120. My my monitors at home on my computer, they have a 120 hertz refresh rate. They say that it reduces eye strain. Oh, that's good. And It's medical, yeah. OB. It's medical that you get the new one. Man, insurance should pay for it. Or the government. <laughs> I should get one for free is what we're saying. But it's definitely helpful. If you get a lot of eye strain, I mean, that really is something helpful. Yeah. Uh, they also say that it will have the always on feature that you find in the Apple Watch Series 5 and 6. Guys, our phone's always on anyways. <laughs> we're always on it. <laughs> no problem. No, what does do that do? Have- um, I don't know. Do you have that on your i on your watch? Um, I don't know if I do or not. I don't know. Uh, I know I had an Android phone that that did that, and basically what it does is it's like. And I'm assuming I don't know what Apple will how they'll do theirs, but for the Android one, it was a Motorola, and it basically was quote unquote always on. So you would get the time, and if you had any notifications, but it was like really dim and kind of a black and white presentation, but it was a way for you to still get your info without having to completely activate your phone uh, screen and stuff. I gotcha. So just uh, to save save energy on the other side, I see. Yeah. So I don't know. Like that, I, let's face it, you, since you've got the the hookup, you're going to get it anyway. And the so, rest of us are, these are out some here of the, on our 40-year-old <laughs> iPhones. No, yours is fine, fine. And you still love yours. But uh, so here's some of the rumors for the next iPhone for the 13 one. And if they told me, again, we could just go tiny bit bigger on the screen every time. Just turning it up a little bit more each time. Just a tiny just, bit. Just enough, just you know. Just get an iPad mini. Just get an iPad mini. <laughs> we're getting close to it, but we're not there yet. So that's always appreciated. We could just make it a little bigger. Because what do you like? You can make phone calls from your iPad Mini as long as it's tied into your iPhone, right? Uh, yeah, I'm sure you could. Well, there you go. You're all set. You got a brand new phone, Nikki. Look at you. I would still like it in phone form, uh, but we'll see. Did they say anything? Like, I'm assuming October, November would be when the 13 would come out. Now, keep in mind that this is, of course, rumors. All- Rumor, uh, but yeah, they say a launch date of sometime this fall. Maybe the riot would sound better if they spent less time improving their lives at their gym. That was sarcasm. It's the riot on Radio U. Here we go. I've got a list here. Maybe we don't do all 10, but it's 10 ways to know you're depressed, but you're not sad. Uh, I think that is, as someone who deals with depression, I think that's one of the things that's the hardest to get across to people is that they assume if you're depressed, you're like, here's a daisy. It will help you smile. See, you're not depressed anymore. Wee. And it's like, ah. Not exactly how it goes, but the list might help you recognize if that's a problem you're dealing with. So here comes your list, Nikki. Drastic changes in appetite, meaning that you eat more or you're eating way less. Now, that's a little hard to pinpoint with this last year. So that might Mm -hmm. not be the first one you judge your depression on just on that, because we've all had some swings in eating throughout the past year and a half. So maybe not starting with that one. (laughs) Boy, when you frame it in the COVID context, this whole list, we may oh, all be yeah. there. It all could so, work that way. Irritability and aggressiveness. They <laughs> say that anger is uh, probably the first sign of depression that you see in men. Like you get angry more than, say, you normally would. Uh, let's see. Also, social habits have subtly changed. Maybe you find yourself not returning phone calls. Mm-hmm. They say that's one that you can see in friends. If all of a sudden oh, they your just friend seem to get have back dropped off. You? Yeah, they seem to have dropped off the map for no reason. Uh, that's a good chance that maybe you need to go a little hard er in checking on them to make sure well, they're okay. Yeah, to reverse the thing so it's not you realizing if you're fighting depression, but if you think a friend is fighting it and they're doing that, that's one of the top signs to go check in with them. Yeah. Um, you experience a change in your energy level that impacts your self-care habits. Dude, this one's real because I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but like when I get depressed... It's like, hey, uh, you know, clean that up. And it's like, oh, it's just too much. I just can't. It's overwhelming. Like, it's like, all no, just put that in the trash. 
How could you possibly put that in the trash? How could you ask that of me? I'm gonna I'm gonna have to put my hand on it. I'm gonna have to lift my arm. Then you get angry I'm have to put about it. In it. There. It's just everything. But it, it's really funny. Like it's it's dumb. That's one of the things that I have to constantly remind myself is like, hey, 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 it's not a big deal. It's just laundry. Like it's not like you're not solving the world. You're not pushing back. It just do your laundry. That's all. And the other one, this sounds so ridiculous. I don't want to brush my teeth. I'm like, oh my gosh. Why do you have to brush your teeth? I don't want it's so much that work. And the laundry are the two main things. <laughs> <laughs> That's the two hard ones. Isn't it, isn't it hilarious? <laughs> oh, it's so ridiculous. Um, they say uh, you also find yourself working a whole lot more just to kind of bury yourself, and uh, you experience extended bouts of stress. Your sleep patterns might change. So, for example, you, you might think like somebody who's depressed sleeps a lot. It might be the other way around. You mm-hmm. can't sleep. Uh, and then they say if you noticed an extreme sensitivity to any kind of rejection. So if you're like, hey, could you pass the salt? And you're like, well, no. And then all of a sudden you're like, why does everyone hate me? If it goes to that and that's how you start thinking, then these are some signs that you might be fighting depression. Hey, man, I'm laughing about it, but I've experienced pretty much all of it. So, look, if you if any of that stuff really rung a bell to yourself, I would say reach out today and talk to somebody. And I mean, find a friend that you trust, uh, find somebody that you can talk to and you're going to feel like you're burdening them and all of those things. But I'll tell you a lot of times people don't know what's going on with us unless we speak up. We don't like to speak up. I don't like to speak up, but speak up, say something to somebody uh, that you care about and get some help because you're not alone. Lots of people go through this, and there's no point in going through it alone when you can learn some coping skills and get some help. Riot Podcast Radio U. Last night, I had about an hour of free time, um, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sit down and watch something. So I spent 45 minutes adding things to my Netflix queue, <laughs> and, and I watched was it. nothing. <laughs> yep. Well, don't you feel, though, sometimes you, it's like that's all you needed to do, especially if you go and clean out your, uh, all your shows and stuff that you don't actually want to watch. Sometimes that feels very helpful to clean. Yeah, it does. Absolutely. I did that the other day with something and man, just get rid of it. You're not going to watch it. Yeah, but let's be honest, Nikki, like across your life, you get a real rush out of cleaning. I do. Organizing. (laughs) I mean, but it's a good thing if you're never going to watch it, it just sits there and just will stress you out after a while. Yeah. So the one thing in the middle of that that I did do was I noticed that there was a new comedy from Kevin James. Yeah. You didn't see a preview for it yet? Did you not know it was coming? Uh, nope. I knew literally nothing, nothing about, about it. it. It's something with and him and is it NASCAR or like the TV show equivalent of it and some sort of uh, pit crew sort of thing? No, it's straight up NASCAR. Is like it? it's licensed. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. So um, he is a uh, is he an owner or a pit crew boss? Like I can't remember. Uh, it actually was not cl- was not clear to me uh, what his job was as I was watching it. But it was super clear to me who the target audience <laughs> was as I was watching it. Super clear. How much did you get through? Uh, like, did you get through the whole episode? Uh, about eight minutes. Eight minutes of it? Is like, it not for I, you? You know what? I There is a certain style of comedy that in general does not appeal to me. Yeah. And while I think Kevin James is at times a brilliant comedian, like I think he's very watchable and he's funny, um, that, this just wasn't doing it, it for It was too me. much of a <laughs> formula because for me, I love this old show called King of Queens and Kevin James was in it and it was... Comedy wise, it was amazing. And Kevin James does a lot of funny stuff on his YouTube channel too. He, now there's yes, he does. There's plenty of other Kevin James items that are not as funny <laughs> as right. the King of Queen stuff. And so when I saw this, especially with it being branded with NASCAR, it felt like it was going to be too much of a commercial. Yeah. Well, it is check this out. The owner of the team uh retires and brings in, and I quote his millennial daughter uh, to run the team. And there's so this conflict? is about Yeah. Uh, it's just one of the, it's just one of those things that like after a while I was like, you know, uh 
the, somebody like this is a laser focused. There are billions of NASCAR fans that are going to eat this up. Yeah, I still want to um, watch it. So if anybody's watched the Kevin James, the new one on Netflix, tell me if it's good or not, because I still like him. I, I still want to give it a try. I, You know what? Honestly, like I'm not. I'm not taking a swipe at it or at you. I think you would like it Mm -hmm. because of his, it it feels like some of his other comedy stuff that you've liked. I I think you, you might like it. And if you don't, guess what though? If you you don't, no one's mad at you. So you don't have to worry about disappointing anybody if it's not something you like, but yeah, I wanted to give it a try. Well, you know what, Nikki? It's out there. It's on Netflix. It's waiting for you. (laughs) And if you're like me, take some time Add this thing to your queue and never watch it. Well, no, that's not true. You watched eight minutes of it and then you took it okay. out of your queue. Right. So you gave it a shot. You gave it a try. You know what? Nikki's right. I, I did. I, I gave it uh, eight minutes, which is longer than I give a lot of things. Really? So maybe it is good. You're basically listening to a real-time cringe compilation. This is The Riot on Radio U. We are... What, like a month away from the Justice League Snyder cut that's going to hit in March. And wow, you know what? The the opportunities, Nikki, that are presenting themselves <laughs> for us to celebrate this historic event are just are they incredible. Good? Are they big? <laughs> oh, yeah. What if I told you I could get you a meal kit that will... Here's the part that I don't understand. It doesn't ship... Until April fifteenth, you but know that's after the movie half, releases. I yes, I know, um, I know, uh, but it comes from Wonderland at Home. Have mm-hmm. you ever heard of this? I've not. They're like a they're like a meal in a box company. So you pay no, no. I'm not going to tell you what you pay. I'll give you an opportunity to get that <laughs> later. <laughs> but first, let me hear what we get if I do decide to pay. Okay, it's a box for two mm-hmm. called the the mother box, which it, when you I can't remember if that actually is in. Yeah, it's in the just the original Justice League, but it will feature heavily in the director's cut. Um, so you've got the ocean trench. That's the Aquaman part of your meal. Icelandic cod and chips with trench dressing. But you have to make it the yourself. Big- so you it is a meal kit. Yeah, you have to make it at home. Uh, the Big Belly Burger from The Flash. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's an eight-ounce Angus steak burger with cheese, potato, onions, and Wonderland burger sauce on a pretzel bun. That sounds good. The Resurrection Superman, a corn and maple souffle with silver popcorn. I guess. We'll that put sounds- that one together. <laughs> That sounds kind of gross. Well, maybe it. What is? Maybe if you had it, it makes sense. Sometimes flavors don't make sense until you try them together. Okay, so you get the bat. It's dark chocolate with gooey salted butter caramel. Oh, sounds pretty good. Um, the ancient Themyscira and fire. Uh, Wonder Woman smoked marshmallows. marshmallows all right, mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, and uh, you know what? There's a few more in here. Uh, so if you want this stuff so you get element x from uh cyborg which is an energy drink as well um so yeah it's a meal kit that was for you and a special someone and it features the dc superheroes seen in justice league for the snyder cut yes and so also martian manhunter gets something was he in justice league or is he it's going to be... That's well, he's in the uh, box. Whatever, he's in the menu box. He, <laughs> he at least gets e- that. Either way. <laughs> he's either jalapeno, way. salsa, and cheese cookies. Now, <laughs> a cheese cookie? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yeah, it's a jalapeno <laughs> it's cheese cookie. It's fine. Now, all of this could be yours on April 15th, which is tax day, by the way. Mm-hmm. All of this could be yours for only $150 plus tax. Oh, I feel like that's expensive, but maybe it's not as bad as I thought you were going to tell me it was. So it's more than I would pay, but you could have told me they were charging more and I probably would have believed it. If you want all this Nikki, in one box. <laughs> let me wind it back for you. Now, remember, mm-hmm. it's for two. Yeah, you're right. I feel like you can get maybe one or two meals out of this. If not, this would have been nice <laughs> for like a Valentine's Day meal, like a whole big special thing. You got... You get the cheese cookies, you get the chocolate, you get the drinks, you get everything. 
or at the very least, have it out there for the launch of the movie, you big yeah. dorks. So, so the, like, <laughs> I could have ordered it and eaten it at home while I watched the movie. So the movie comes out on March 18th, but the boxes, if this feels like they weren't allowed to until April 15th. Probably not. It just Probably seems not. like a licensing thing or some sort of uh, deal they had to make. Um, so there you go. It's, uh, oh, it's $130 to pre-order Did it, I say Obi. 50 Yeah, it's 130 I am so sorry. <laughs> Could you? You made it seem worse. Now, I am so, is not so bad. I am so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, once you once you change that up, it becomes completely reasonable. Well, My if you're bad. into Justice League, this could actually be kind of fun, but it is through Wonderland at Home, which is a menu like a meal kit delivery service. Yeah. Well, if it seems like I'm, you know, talking it down, that's because I am. <laughs> Obadiah and Nikki tried their hardest, and that's what really matters. This is the worst of the Ryan podcast. Man, the government's handing out money, and you just don't know what to do with it. You just got money, money, money. Where's it all going to go? I got an idea, all right? Uh, the Federal Aviation Administration. You've heard of them. The F. AA. Yeah. They just granted approval to a ground air vehicle, aka a flying car. Hey, there we go. <laughs> but it's. Mm-hmm. So they got approval, like to start making one, or like people can start. Is one created? <laughs> Where now, are we at in the process? <laughs> I've actually seen this thing before uh, because it's something that they've been working on for a long time, uh, but they only just now, like I said, got that FAA approval. They say they're another year away from making it street legal, mm-hmm. but you you will be able to park this thing in your driveway. Now, it has a 27-foot wingspan, so the wings be fold careful, up. That's, be careful. You could clip something. There's, a, <laughs> there, there's always going to be some issues, right? Um But uh, they say that the car can fly, and it can fly at speeds of about 100 miles per hour. Huh. Interesting. I didn't even know at 100 miles an hour, is that fast enough to fly? Uh, I think if you're low enough, it's it's like gliding maybe would be a better way. Um, It's funny. In the future, I always thought like, oh, if we have cars that fly, in my mind, I put it as it looking like a car that happened to fly. That's not the case for this. This is obviously looking like an airplane that you can just happen to drive on the road. Uh, But I think I would still want, if I had my way in the future, I'd rather have it look like one of our normal cars that just happens to have, you know, wings pop out of it or something, and then you can fly. I think it's one of those things where, at least to me, when I think about flying cars, I think about... Blade Runner, uh, The Fifth Element, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, stuff like that, where I just expect it to fly on some new super fab technology that doesn't exist yet. And this is what an actual flying car would look like. A little disappointing. (laughs) Just a tiny bit. (laughs) It'll run on regular gas. It's weird. It's weird to see. So they first promised this sort of plane car hybrid in 2015 then in 2018 and then in 2019 so they had to do a lot of testing with it um it runs on premium gasoline or a certain okay so you got to get 93 okay or a certain type of airplane fuel uh it's powered by a hybrid electric motor uh weighs about 1300 pounds Technically, what they say and what they envision is that you would just type in your destination and it would go from there. You wouldn't really have to do any of the flying part of it. Yeah. So it only costs 40000 Oh, oh no, yeah. Add, another, sorry. add one more it's zero. <laughs> $400,000. That was but the 2018 car- one, which is a two-seater. Well, and you know what? That's enough for me. <laughs> Two, okay. Here's, here's the real question. Okay. You're out. Guy asks you on a date, tells you he'll pick you up at whatever. He pulls up in a flying car. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to let this guy you don't know that well, who you're going on a date with, fly you in the flying car? That's a good question. I don't think you have to worry too much. I doubt it ever happens, but it is something to think about. Like, what if the guy came in in a helicopter? It wouldn't be any different than the flying car thing. You know, I read an article this oh my gosh, should I even tell you this about how Burt Reynolds used to pick up his dates in helicopters? Ew, gross. 
<laughs> I know it's random. It was random. I I saw it the other day, and it was just one of those things where I, I literally thought I was like, if somebody, I guess since he was a movie star back in the seventies, like if you know a movie star showed up outside your house with a helicopter, you'd be like, yeah, yeah I guess. Let's go. I mean, I guess you'd know have to do it. But just like random person helicopter. Eh. I mean, quite frankly, people are terrible drivers. The idea of putting them several thousand feet in the air seems like a terrible idea. The Riot with Obadiah and Nikki on Radio U. You know, dating during the pandemic's hard. It is. Like, you're trying to get out there, you're trying to meet people, and uh, there are no people. And then, if you go (laughs) out and you find someone, you find out that, oh, you're not supposed to be out you're a bad person, well, you can et cetera, do, et cetera. You can do Zoom dates and stuff, and you can meet people that way. That but it's, sounds awful. It's very awkward. It's already hard enough when you have a first date with someone, and to do it online, kind of really, truly being disconnected. So, um, you know, and it's hard. I know some people who did some dating distance-wise a bit when you actually could go someplace or pick up food. And, like, one would sit in one car, one would sit in the other car, and you could have a date that way. But it was still hard to get to know the person. This is funny. So apparently, Nikki, in the middle of this dating world that we're living in, uh, there is now a term that you need to get a hold of if you're out there dating, and that is Fousey-ing. So the you one- like Dr. Fousey? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's that. So, but what does the term mean? It means uh, that if uh, y- you break, basically, you break up over somebody or break up with somebody over pandemic concerns. Oh, so, so that's the term for it. Oh, I see. Did you just falsy her? Yeah, I had to. That's like, it. She wouldn't wear a mask. So if you're breaking up and, and it's something surrounding the pandemic somehow, that's the term you can use for it fantastic uh though it is worth it is worth noting that uh if you head over to urban dictionary which i did uh though falsying we're talking about in a dating sense there's also a way to falsy someone means to correct a hyperbolic statement Uh. so somebody's exaggerating and you're like well actually (laughs) uh that's that can also be called falsying it hasn't been updated with the dating side of it though that is still a relatively new term uh, the other thing Urban Dictionary says is that uh, to wash your hands for more than 20 seconds is to falsy and a unit of length equivalent to six feet. <laughs> That's also a falsy. It makes you wonder, though, if there's any other pandemic terms like going around in the dating stuff. We just haven't heard any other ones, but it makes you wonder if there is. Well, I I have no answer for you on that other than, uh, you know, if... If you say to Eric, like, Eric, listen, we no, listen, I'm going to fousey you if we don't door dash. I can't have you going out I in can't public. Handle it. <laughs> or you can pick it it's up. It's too if you dangerous. Want. <laughs> we have to door dash. But uh, if you're if you're currently trying to date and you're doing it the Zoom uh, or at least, you know, online way that it must be harder than just having a chance to meet in person. It must not be as fun or maybe it is fun, depending on uh, the, the connection you have with the person. Maybe it is fine. It. You know what? It's just going to depend on your own perspective. Yeah! <laughs> you were one of the lucky few who missed the riot when they were live. Yet here you are. I also like to live dangerously. This is the worst of the riot podcast. You, Nikki, used to be a vegan. I did. And then you started secretly backsliding. I didn't secretly. And then you were just... <laughs> I just stopped doing that. I'd been a vegetarian Listen, for no. a while, and then Every... I'd been a vegan, and then that, that ended. <laughs> Every vegan I know is a vegan, and then they're like, oh, well, that doesn't count. <laughs> no, that, that, you know, now, then it became a label at that point, and it really was all life became about, and, and that's why some vegans uh, don't enjoy it when it becomes that way. So for some, if you just relax, and in certain areas, if you have an alternative sometimes, or, you know, like, remember when Meatless Monday used to be a thing, or you would try this sort of product uh, and give it a chance, that's, I think, a, a more healthier way, a more sustainable way than um, when it just kind of takes over, which it does for a lot of people. I didn't do any of the things that you just said, but that's great. <laughs> But you get what I mean, right? And so with this, there's lots more alternatives than there used to be. I, I would have loved all this stuff back when I was a vegan, and there wasn't the same amount of fun things like there is now. 
Well, the great people at KitKat, Nikki, they are looking to get out there and make something happen. <laughs> so they're going to be releasing several uh, into several countries this year a vegan KitKat bar. It'll be the V KitKat. Uh, they have now, plant, plant-based alternatives uh, to dairy. That's what makes a KitKat a non-vegan item. And they're going to be using those alternatives to have a new thing. Rice, oat, soy, coconut, pea, almonds. These are all things that are going to end up in your vegan Kit Kat. So does it say I uh, if it's going to be... No, it's not coming to the U.S. Well, yet. Or maybe they're trying it someplace else. Why wouldn't you send it here? There are Kit Kats. There's amazing Kit Kats around the world, and we never get the ones. I don't know why we don't get the same releases as other places do. Well, I can tell you right now. It's because in the United States, Nestle makes Kit Kat it produced under a licensing agreement with Hershey's. Oh, so as a result... We don't get all of them then. Oh, there it is. Because in other countries then, they get Kit Kats from Nestle themselves, whereas we get them through a separate deal through Hershey. Oh, I forgot about that. All right, well... yeah. We don't get it yet, but I'm sure the V, the Kit Kat, the vegan one will be available eventually. Um, it'll be available in Britain and it will not be on sale in the United States. Uh, that's about all the information they're giving right now. All right. Hey, you know what, Nikki? This is just one more reason for us to go globe trotting. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> just to go get one. Yeah, we'll just have one. One more reason. <laughs> Probably shipped in, but that's great. Uh, it's worth trying. And I told Obi the packaging looks really nice on it. It's got a really nice look to it. They they did a good job with that. It's purdy. Is it healthy eating so many snacks, chips, and Oreos every single morning? No, of course not. But they do it for you. Uh, too many guys got their stomach for this line of work. That's real love. It's the riot on Radio U. Nikki, we got to leapfrog straight into the Godzilla trailer. <laughs> you want to do that one instead that is posted if you head over to radio you ride on our facebook page first say hey make sure you're following the page and then you can take a look at what obi just posted godzilla versus kong versus wayne <laughs> and you're like what's that wayne is a cat <laughs> Wayne is this guy uh, who decided to, he's a YouTuber. Uh, He's JKK Films on uh, on YouTube, and he put his cat into (laughs) the trailer as another giant monster. It's the cutest thing ever. It's amazing. It's it's the cutest thing. (laughs) He's just standing there. He's looking in the windows. He's up there next to Godzilla, and that's just his cat, Wayne. And now he's on the video, too. Yeah, but if you look, at one point his cat does unleash some kind of a fire breath. Yeah, or it looks like just, you know, at another shot when maybe at a Godzilla, the light thing that comes out, he puts it there in his cat. It's coming out of him at that point. You almost wish that, you know, the Zack Snyder director's cut, you almost wish <laughs> that there was for Godzilla and Kong, like there's this other version with the cat that's actually in it that was an actual movie, because I'd watch that. See, the thing I want to see... Oh. Are you saying you're not going to watch Godzilla vs. Kong? I absolutely am, but I'm saying I would watch this too. They could get me for okay. both of those. I'd even pay a I little just, to watch the cat. <laughs> I love the idea of Godzilla fighting a cat, like a, a big cat, and the cat just doesn't care. And like Godzilla keeps bothering it, and the cat's just like, whatever. So, <laughs> you know, like if you ever watch a dog bother a cat, and a cat like looks away. It's not paying any attention to the stupid dog. And then at one point, he just reaches over and smacks Godzilla with his paw. And then he just goes back to, like, licking his paw and looking out at the ocean. Like, he doesn't care. I like these creative things. This, he he puts, he's not a good boy. Like, that's the description to the thing. So, if you want to watch Wayne the Cat, he's been added to the Godzilla. I wish it was the whole trailer. It's not. It's like 30 seconds of it. But if you want to watch him in the Godzilla versus Kong trailer, Radio You Riot on our Facebook page. It's, it's cute. It's worth watching. Yeah, I will say if he's, did he, is he also the guy? No. Okay. I have had, because of watching and liking this video, I have started getting these like weird. Oh, from uh, the other cat rec- creators? <laughs> well, no, from people that are doing their own uh 
like special effects. I mean, I I know it was a thing, but I've never really looked at it. But like, man, my YouTube suggestions are full of people <laughs> that are redoing special effects for movies. Yeah, some of them are really good. Some of them are terrible <laughs> but they're still all terrible. fun to watch if you get caught they down are. that hole it's fun to watch them oh dude let me tell you i mean you guys know this but youtube can just it can swallow you whole but this there's is what, no reason to st- stop yeah, watching all the negative things and all the the videos here and the videos there and the stuff that everybody's mad about like this i think brings people together when the guy makes the trailer with the cat in it with godzilla and kong that's what youtube's about that's the good side of it yeah there it is so take a little time i put it on the riots facebook page facebook.com slash radio you riot this is the worst of the riot on radio you look i get it the people over at CBS are just like, hey, what is an old something that we can turn into a new something? Now, in fairness, <laughs> that's every everybody's network. doing that everywhere. Huh? You're right. You're right. It's true. Uh, but they started, I think it was this week, they started Clarice. So it was a silence of the lambs, even though they weren't allowed to say the word Hannibal, I think, if I remember correctly. That's correct. But yet it was supposed to be implied. It was after all of that. But because of licensing, they were not allowed to actually say Hannibal in it at all. And they were allowed to say things like, remember that one time, that one guy, that was really something. What was he? He was named after a guy that attacked Rome. Jeez, I can't remember. Now, <laughs> Rode I, on the elephants, no I, names mentioned. I don't know if that's actually in the script, but otherwise they just think that you would know it if you watched it anyway. So they right. proceeded to do the show, even though they couldn't use that character or reference that character at all. Well, Nikki, uh, the house that Silence of the Lambs was filmed in, you know, 30 years ago. Actually, that's interesting. It was released, what was today, Tuesday? So Sunday Mm -hmm. was the 30th anniversary of that movie. Valentine's Day was? That's what it says. Well, that's a horrible thing to have attached to that. I don't know. <laughs> so if you're a fan I, of Silence of the Lambs, um, you you can stay at the house. You can spend the night you can and buy tour. It. You can buy it? Can oh. you buy it? Oh, yeah. Oh, no, well, the- you're right. They, it's the bed and breakfast. I'm, I, was, I got two stories like this. One they're selling. This is a bed and breakfast where you could go spend the night in the Buffalo Bill house. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. So he you can was- stay there. It's basically becoming a... Not it's not a Airbnb, but it's similar. It's just a bed and breakfast that you can stay overnight. Yeah. So then you would, I guess the thrill is you go stay there and put the lotion on your skin. Yeah, you can walk through and that- with uh, and have a tour of it. And then they plan to renovate part of the home to actually match the film. Yeah. And it has like. Some props and different things in the house. So if you it's, want, it's it's something. If you want to stay, you can be a part of a contest to be the first person to spend the night at the Buffalo Bills house from Silence of the Lambs. You can enter via social media through Buffalo Bills house through the 26th. And then a winner will be announced in March. And then they'll do bookings in a few months after that. I don't want to stay there. I know. I would like to go (laughs) somewhere else. And it's not just, it's not because like, oh, it's a silence of the lamb's house. What the heck do I care? I want to go somewhere. If I'm going to a bed and breakfast, I want it to be like, yeah, like luxurious beyond belief. This looks like people threw a cot in a rundown house and they're like, yeah, but a movie was filmed outside one time. (laughs) It doesn't mean I want to stay in the aesthetic that the movie made the house for the the guy, the Bill character, like, I doesn't mean I want to stay in a house like that. But they think plenty of fans of the franchise would, and that's why they'll start doing booking. So you can still try to win the chance to be the first person, though, to spend the night. All right. And again, I could just be showing my ignorance here, but I'm going to ask, who's a fan of Silence of the Lambs? Mm, I bet there's some people are out they, there. Or the movie. Are we too, or the Hannibal are, stuff. Are, is, Are we too young to know these people? Like maybe they're older because they were fans of the movie and like whatever. I don't know. I didn't watch Hannibal enough. Did it have? It didn't have that character in it, did it? But for Hannibal, like Clarice Starling, that was pretty popular. I think that was on NBC, wasn't it? That that did something. You know, it's fine. I mean, we just don't like it. 
we're showing our ignorance. It's probably this huge thing that we don't know. Anything. They're, they're having conventions. We don't even know. We're like, you know what? What is this Star Trek thing? That, <laughs> who's ever even heard of that? Uh, Star Wars? Don't we have enough wars here on Earth? That one I think would do better out of the other two. <laughs> the Riot. Not, Not everyone's a fan. I wonder whose idea this was. Radio U. You know, I... I've tried over time to be like cool about it and to uh, very plainly, but also urgently explain the potential danger that is waiting for us. And I just continue to see people not caring. And I know people are like, you know, global warming, COVID-19, they got all this stuff. But I'm telling you, the real danger is in Antarctica. So OB that's has, where the danger is. Has long been a uh, an advocate for promoting the fact that we shouldn't touch what's under the ice there because he feels like a long time ago things went there to be held captive to mm-hmm, to hide right. and just to be safe from them. And when we go and mess around in Antarctica, especially in the ice, that's when something that's been buried there for a long time can come back out and get us. I believe that the ancients came together and they took that great evil and they buried it under that ice at the to poles. To save the world. And <laughs> to save the world. And see, they all thought to themselves, nobody we'd be dumb enough to go down there and poke around. And, you know, they kept passing stories on to their kids, stories passed on to legend. Pretty soon, we even forgot the legends. And now we're like, we should go down to Antarctica and drill in the ice. Let's see what's see what there. We find. <laughs> so, what if there's cool stuff under the ice? So they've done that before, but there's just been an article the last couple of days, uh, a science alert, if you would. And everybody's been sending that to us because they found more life forms underneath the ice in a hostile, you know, uh, area beneath the Arctic, ice, the Antarctica ice. You guys are crazy. Don't just stop. It. <laughs> Did just you see the stop. pictures of the so, stuff they found? Yeah, they say they found sponges in the pitch black seawater almost you. a half a mile <laughs> below the ice. And they're like, man, how are they here? We don't know. <laughs> Dude, you don't even know. So they say that, um, you know, there's there's tons of creatures. It's this whole area, and they're fascinated how it can survive in harsh conditions, but that's just where it lives. I've got an idea. Why don't you scrape some of them off and bring them up so we can take a look at them that way? And there becomes every uh, horror movie that we're familiar with where it starts with some sort of creature in a lab and it gets loose and then it eats everybody. Yeah, that's a great idea. Why don't we do that? I mean, don't you want to see it for yourself? Don't you want to know? Hey, why don't you lick it? See what it tastes like. (laughs) So they're saying their discovery raises so many questions, uh, and they want answers like how did all these sponges and all this uh, sea life get there in the first place? It says, what do they eat? How long have they been there? Um, You know, just is it the same as like other species we have in other waters? But here, this is just the uh, cold version of it. They're just now trying to figure out more about it. Yeah. Well, they eat people, and soon they're going to be eating you. <laughs> so look for that coming next year, maybe. Let's finish all the stuff yeah. we have this year, and let's create a new thing for next year. Yeah, it's cool. Like, we'll get over COVID-19 just in time for us bringing up some ancient evil. I, it sounds great. I, like, I mean, be, that, Let's call them the, uh, the ice sea sponges. Those are the things that will come and get us. The icy sponges? Ooh, I love a good that's, icy. That's good. It's not. See? Nope. They'll eat you. They'll freeze you. That's it. They'll come out and they'll freeze you. And that's the whole story right there. If you missed out on the next riot moment when it originally aired, you don't know how lucky you are. You're listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Listen, it's a long established fact on this show that I like crap. I like little pieces of crap that I can set on my desk. Little toys, you know, <laughs> uh, just stuff that I can put everywhere. No, I don't think and, you have uh, as much as a, you used to have a lot more back in the day. I think you, you've condensed down though. Yeah, I put a bunch of it in tubs back there. And <laughs> believe it or not, sometimes I rotate the crap out. So That's I'm good. like, oh, hey, bring in new stuff. I haven't stuff. seen this <laughs> stupid thing in a while. Let's pull this out. So I, I'm going to have to do something about it. I got to. I got trash. I got little figurines. I got pen. I'm just, I'm Nikki. 
I might need you to come in and help me. Do you want me to like, come through and, and we can decide we could put things in piles and then decide what you want to keep? I think I might need you to come in condo with me. Oh. And th- here's the problem, though. All but everything you everything you pick up, you're going to be like, oh, that strikes joy. Like, <laughs> that's See, that's the thing that they don't talk to you about with hoarders is they're like, you know, if it doesn't spark joy, you don't want it. But I'm like, oh, that does and that does. Well, and remember that one time and yeah, remember that. I think the hardest thing is Obi, like you, Obi has a memory probably attached to each thing. Whereas that's why you need someone to come in who has no connection with the items that you can't get rid of. That way they can kind of push you into picking some of those to see what actually needs to be kept and things that you can just give away or that you could just throw away. But don't you think that's a great indicator of someone that is right on the verge of a real problem? They're just like, but this ketchup packet is the <laughs> one that we got. No, I, don't I remember think you it have like it was be. yesterday. It was 2017, and uh, I mean, look at the look at the fine ridges on this ketchup packet. See, I, I can't. It's not can't. as bad as you would think because we've read plenty of stories where instead it's the person who's collected like fifty thousand ketchup packets, and they've done it since something horrible happened when they were younger, and that's how they kept going like that's to their coping thing and they just keep all these packets that's the issue you just have a few you know memorabilia things from some of the movies you like and games (laughs) and places you do need to go through them but i don't think you're as bad as we've seen a lot worse we've seen a lot other bigger collections yeah, that's good. I One of the things I like to do is I like to compare myself to other people and say, at least I'm not that guy. <laughs> You're not as bad as that person. Did you ever buy, we talked about the, the one thing that Obi does have an excessive amount of is uh, movies and like physical copies, you know, 4K and Blu-rays and stuff. But you were talking about putting a shelf it behind you, like in your basement setup and actually making it a focal point of the room or do are they still in the back in tubs? No, they're still in the back. No, they're in the back on shelves. Oh, on shelves? They're just crappy shelves. Yeah, like I wouldn't, the shelves are no good. And yeah, I'm like a retail establishment. We got our stuff here, but then we've got more in the back. You need to get a nice like what size? Nice shelving system and actually make those, uh, again, part of the room. Yeah, I, I should. And you know what? Uh, I will. As soon as I, uh, you know, clean up some of this stuff. <laughs> He's just going to push it aside. Actually, that would also be what I would come in and do. If you ever watched any of those shows where they come through and clean up and they decorate again, I'd have to bring the shelves with me. See, but I feel like you and I would have to have a breakthrough first or like at some point in it where you're just like, <laughs> hey, no, come on in. Hey, hey buddy. No, come on, buddy. Sit down. Yeah, let's, let's sit down. Let's talk. What does this so thing I tell got you, you di- or mean to you? I got you a Diet Mountain Dew here. Just have a seat, okay? All right, now let's talk. And then you get through the crying, and then we're ready to go through, and we can put everything and go through it all. All right, Nikki, I can do it. Thanks for listening to the Worst of the Riot podcast. Oh, no, I missed it. Do it again. You can hear us live every day on the Radio U Network through the Radio U app or at riot.radiou.com. What does it mean to be a duck? Search your heart. <laughs> <laughs>